Hey everyone, Rob here, and I have some updates on what's going on here in Iceland with regards to the possible future eruption. Uh, the previous one, of course, has ended, and how the land rise in Spatsengi is going, uh, all coming from the meteorological office. So let's get started. Uh, we'll just zoom out here on the graph. So two weeks have now passed since the end of the last eruption of this Sundnux crater series. Now, data from GPS models show that the land rise in Spatsengi does continue at a steady pace. And looking at the graph here, we can see this red line towards the bottom uh, with the circle at the end. That is the current situation that's been going on. It's the status since September 18th, 2024. Um, so that's what this graph is looking at. Measurements of the land mass and, and rise estimates that the rate of magma accumulation are similar to what was observed between the last magma flows and eruptions uh, and you know current. But from what I'm looking at, it does seem like it's a little bit faster of a rise than uh, the previous ones, which we can see in red and green and so forth. So we can see again the color chart up here in the legend, and it goes from the oldest, which is this purple color, all the way to the latest one and we can see that there are nine with the tenth one on the way there's a huge amount of things going on here in iceland uh, now while magma accumulation does continue under Svartsengi and the amount of magma reaches a level comparable to that of the last events they say that a new magma flow and even eruption can be expected in this series and uh sort of towards the end of this event whenever it does occur we can see there are a couple that did go for quite a number of days between 60 and around 85 days so this is this gold and the green but many of them are in the 20 to 40 range before something that really does occur and that's where we are sitting kind of right now so we'll see how things go but of course uh, again looking at the amount of land rise that's needed to hit this uh, we see a lot of these stars which are the eruptions those are quite a bit higher than where we are currently. So based on this trajectory, uh, we can expect maybe somewhere around the 40 days before uh, we're sort of in line with uh, some of the other ones and maybe even 60 days to kind of get into that, into that average. So they do say it is too early to say exactly when to expect the next magma flow or event or eruption. And uh, basically exactly what I said. They said that if you look at the last two events, it is unlikely that anything substantial will happen in the next two weeks. Uh, and that's, again, looking at the red and the green. Those land rises are a little bit higher up than we than we are now. Uh, and then the gold is also, as I mentioned, uh, quite a bit higher at a, at a 20 on, on this scale. So looking at the risk assessment, with all of that in mind, and we can see here, it says it's all in Icelandic, but it says uh, area one, uh, two, three, four, and all, et cetera. We are looking at the newest one, uh, of course, in the area that we had the eruption, which is three, five, and six. And this area three is basically where all of the eruptions have been occurring. Those are the, I guess, higher risk zones. And if we look at the legend uh, on the left here, it does say, you know, it goes from green to yellow, orange, red, and then purple. And purple is typically only used when there is an active eruption going on and not in times like this. So in the new risk assessment, overall risks for area four, which is Grindavik down at the bottom here, uh, it's assessed as yellow. Uh, and the risk is basically due to the crevasses and, and possible areas of just falling into crevasses and the land kind of giving way underneath that that's still an issue and they are working in the town to try and sort of close off the areas that are dangerous and they do want to point out that work's still being done to fence off and mark the dangerous areas in Grindavik and that's also being done by the uh, Grindavik committees the people that are in the town themselves this risk assessment however does not take into account such countermeasures uh, which is necessary to prevent possible accidents or damages caused by you know the danger that's there any given time and they say that there are other factors that affect the degree of risk associated with staying in the town of Grindavik, such as limited escape routes, crack repairs, houses can collapse, danger from damaged electrical cables, etc. So Grindavik is still very dangerous, but they are not taking those types of things into consideration for the town. 
So if you are living in Grindavik, uh, I'm sure that you're well aware of the, yeah, what's been going on basically since the start of all of this. If we take a look at how this has evolved since the last risk assessment, uh, we can see, and of course that's a very terrible image, uh, but we can see that all of the areas have decreased in risk. So three, five, six, and four have all decreased. Uh, three has gone from red down to orange. Five and six, as we can see, has remained. And then Grindavik has decreased to a uh, very little risk. And again, this is not taking into consideration the yeah other dangers that are associated with being in the town, uh, such as the crevasses and, and other damages, as I mentioned. So that's the update for now. Very interesting to see how things will progress over the next coming days uh, and to, to weeks and seeing when we can expect another eruption. Again, my prediction, somewhere in the 40 to 60 days. No surprise there, just based on the average of the other one. So that's it for now. Thank you all for watching. And uh, yeah, put your guess in the comments. When do you think we will see the next eruption here in Iceland?